In our next lesson on DNA replication and repair from Chapter 20, we want to look at the overall model of replication. First of all, we need to recognize that replication is semi-conservative. In other words, the information in one strand is copied into a new complementary strand. The figure at the bottom of your slide here illustrates this process. The parent DNA is in gray. The daughter newly synthesized strands are in purple. So we're going to melt the DNA or separate the two strands and we'll use the sequence of nucleotides in the parent strand to direct the sequence of nucleotides in the newly synthesized daughter strands. The new daughter strand will be a complement of one of the parent strands. When we finish this process, we'll have two DNA molecules. In each one of those, one half of the original parent DNA is conserved, and that's why we refer to this as semi-conservative replication. The replication fork is the point at which we've separated the two strands, and that's illustrated in our figure at the bottom here. Here's our parent DNA. We've separated the two strands of the replication fork, and our newly synthesized DNA is in red. In bacteria, remember they have a closed circular double-stranded DNA molecule, and replication begins at one site called the ORI site. In eukaryotic cells, because of the size of the DNA molecule, we begin replication at numerous sites. There are two possible models for replication. First is the locomotive model of replication, where the replication machinery will bind to the double-stranded DNA and move along the DNA double helix like train on a tracks and it will separate the DNA as it goes and synthesize it. And remember, in this case, the double-stranded DNA is helical, and so the motion of that machine would be kind of a corkscrew motion. The other possibility is the factory model, and in that case, it's the machinery that's stationary, and it feeds the DNA through melting it as it goes. This is the actual true model. So again, the locomotive model, the machinery is in motion, the DNA is stationary. In the actual model, which is the factory model, it's the machinery that's stationary and the DNA is moved through. We can see that in the electron micrograph in the lower right of our slide here. We have a picture of the nucleus. The fluorescent bright spots, the fluorescent foci, are where DNA synthesis is taking place. As you can see, it's within distinct locations within the nucleus and yet there are multiple locations. If it were the locomotive model of replication and the machinery moved along the DNA, DNA synthesis would take place throughout the nucleus and there would be no distinct foci as we see here. And because there are multiple foci, we know it occurs at multiple locations. In our next video lesson, we'll look at how the two strands of DNA are replicated and look at the actual mechanism of synthesis, and we'll look at some of the proteins and enzymes involved.